The sun goes boom. The GFS tries to destroy the southeast. There's a big storm working through the northeast and severe weather is in the picture. So that's what we've got on the docket today, folks. This is Cold Rain's Weather World. It is one day before meteorological summer. So how about that? Can you believe we're already at the doorstep of June and May is going out with a bang and we're gonna take a look at it, folks. And so we're gonna do a rapid fire weather show today. We're going to get through it pretty quick and we've got a lot to get through and we're going to start the way we usually end with our geological and solar update because we had a big sunspot go off and send a coronal mass ejection our way and I've got a couple of interesting things to show you about that. We've been watching sunspot 4100 turn in toward the earth and it's been growing in size and growing in magnet magnetic complexity and when that happens you have the risk of solar flares and so watch this look at this solar flare pointed right at earth went off yesterday an m8.2 i think it was that's close to an x-class solar flare which is the highest ranking of solar flare anyway along with this solar flare you can see it coming off here look at that along with that if we take a look at this view here watch this watch what happens Boom, look at that, big coronal mass ejection. When you see these, uh, looks like this hazy cloud field kind of coming out and it comes out in all directions, that means it's pointed right at Earth. So that's going to send a plasma and wind stream rapidly toward Earth and that's going to interact with our magnetic field to produce magnetic disturbances across the Earth. And we're gonna see things like radio blackouts and electrical fires. That doesn't mean your home is going to start burning up. That's not what I'm talking about. If we had a massive solar flare, maybe that would be the case, but uh, that's not the case today. So, But there is the potential for some interference in electronics as these kinds of events come toward us. We have a weakening magnetic field, and so it tends to impact us more and more through time. And so I wanted to show you that because I thought that was interesting. But that happened. We've got this big solar stream coming in toward Earth. It may hit tonight question is how dense will it be but uh, it was a long duration event and so we're going to see how that impacts us but could be that we see much higher chance of aurora over the next couple of days as that stream interacts with the magnetic field pushing the view line maybe even farther south than what we're showing here which is just south of the border so we'll watch as these update the next day or so but Pay attention if you live in the northern part of the country and you may see the northern lights where it's not all that cloudy. And sometimes these sun bursts, so to speak, interfere with the earth in other ways too, helping to set, you know, create geological instability, maybe earthquakes and volcanic activity. Right now we're not seeing any of that. We're not seeing the effects of any of that come in just yet. That'll happen later. We'll keep a watch on it, but nothing going on out there earthquake-wise this morning. And certainly in the Pacific Rim, we're not seeing anything that's happening out there that we haven't been watching. And so everything is under control from a geological standpoint. Now, from a severe weather standpoint, we See what we typically see in late spring as we get into early June, pockets of energy working through the flow, interacting with warm, moist air at the surface to create regional events of severe weather. Once in a while you have a big outbreak and we're not seeing any big outbreaks today. We're seeing little pieces of energy here in the mid-level flow. I can show you those. So here's, here's one. You see where you hit these colors and these kinks in the jet stream up here. That's what you're seeing with uh, in terms of energy. So there's one there. Big upper level low here that's bringing rain to New England. It's brought severe weather to uh, parts of the southeast and mid-Atlantic yesterday. That's moving out up here north of the border, but we've got a big area of flow around that out of the north. And in that flow, we're seeing energy coming in and you see these bright colors indicative of energy in the flow. Another upper level low working into the, from the west coast into the southwest area. And so just a little little pieces of energy rotating through the flow. They're gonna to help to spark showers and thunderstorms, another trough working in. This will come in here as we get on in later into the weekend, early next week. And watch this as we put this into motion, kind of see how this goes. This piece drops out through the plains. This sort of spin, this big upper level low up in the Northeast just sort of spins here for a couple of days, sending pockets of energy through the flow that's going to help create instability and a little shower and thunderstorm activity. Then we finally start to see all of this activity move in from the subtropical jet to the Northern branch of the jet. All of these pieces of energy move in. They interact a little bit with each other, creating a trough generally in the West. 
and sending energy into the plains. We're going to see severe weather threat pick up back into the plains in Midwest as we get into early next week. The Storm Prediction Center today has outlined a couple of areas of risk, a moderate or a marg so moderate, marginal risk of severe weather exists from up here near St. Louis all the way back in toward Abilene, Texas with a slight risk centered here from Wichita, Kansas down to Wichita Falls, Texas, including Tulsa and Oklahoma City. And then a marginal risk over in the Mid-Atlantic with that piece of energy rotating through the flow here is going to help spark some shower and thunderstorm activity just widely scattered. Maybe, maybe we'll see with cooling aloft, some of those produce some dime size, maybe quarter size hail, but not anything widespread in terms of severe. And then down here toward uh, in Florida from Fort Myers down to Miami, we're seeing a risk of a little bit of uh, severe thunderstorm risk down here too. So not looking at anything widespread, just again, possible shower and thunderstorm activity, a couple of severe wind reports not out of the question, a couple of severe hail reports not out of the question. Tornadoes, if we're going to see any of those, looks most likely here in the slight risk area back in the southern plains. Wind is the highest risk and hail is the highest risk here for supercells that might develop into clusters later on today and then into this evening. Tomorrow night, just a couple of pockets, another little piece of energy, a spoke is going to move through the Carolinas here, bringing a slight risk of hail or marginal risk rather. And then back in the Bitterroots, we're seeing a little bit of cooling aloft come in as well with that trough I told you about working in. So might set off a couple of showers and thunderstorms there. And then down here in southeast Texas, right around uh, the Waco area, looking just south of Dallas, we're looking at a potential for large hail damaging winds in a localized area down here too. So pay attention if you're out and about in those areas tomorrow, but really not looking at any widespread severe weather. And then as we get on into Monday, we're going to see a little bit more of a pickup in organized severe weather with those troughs moving in, interacting with some warm temperatures out here in the plains. And so we could see this area actually expand as we get on into Monday. And then Tuesday, it's going to slip east into the plains and approaching into the Midwest near Madison, Wisconsin, all the way back down to Abilene, Texas. Okay, so we're going to need to watch these areas as we get on into Monday and Tuesday and potentially Wednesday too, as all of that starts to shift east later in the period. The GFS wants to continue to destroy the southeast with tropical weather. And so if we put this on into motion, this is the 6Z run, big hurricane coming in here, hitting, just riding up the coast of Florida, all kinds of erosion and wind damage to the east coast of Florida. Then it crosses the peninsula and then does the same for the southeast coast. It just erodes the coast away and then goes on up along its merry way out into the North Atlantic. Okay, so that's what's going on from the GFS's perspective. The Zero Z did about the same and yesterday did the same. So we're, con we're seeing the GFS continually wanting to show these hurricane threats. But meanwhile, the European, let's see what the European does. Just showers, showers, few storms here in Florida. That's typical for this time of year with little waves moving along in the flow. But uh, where, where's the where's the big storm, folks? Wow, big Bermuda high out here. Certainly would steer something in this direction. But uh, boy, the Europeans just not enthusiastic at all about that. And if we look at the European ensemble, which we tend to trust a little bit more than the operational GFS, same kind of deal, just general troughing. No, no tropical activity down here. So social media, doom and gloom might lose this battle once again. So just pay attention, folks. We'll cover it here at Cold Rain's Weather World and keep you in the loop as we go through you know, the next couple of days. Looking at the general pattern over the next day or so as we go through your weekend, big low pressure up here in the Northeast. That is strengthening and will continue to strengthen as we move on out in time. We've got a few showers that'll pop up over Virginia and the Carol, you know, uh, North Carolina and the Delmarva region later today with that spoke of energy moving around. This low pressure will continue to plague the Northeast through the day, bringing heavy rain up from New York into Maine as we go through the day. And that'll eventually move out. Another little piece of energy will move through the flow here overnight into Oklahoma, sparking some showers and thunderstorm activity, hence the severe weather risk down there today. Through the nighttime hours into the morning hours tomorrow, looking at uh, mid-morning tomorrow, that low pressure is moved on out to the north and it should be drying out for much of New England with the exception of the far northern areas and into New York where we see some energy riding around. And then another spoke comes in tomorrow through the Tennessee Valley into North Carolina, sparking some showers, potentially thunderstorms with, 
you know, could see a few hail reports out of this. And here comes that trough in the northwest and a little system working into the southwest, bringing some showers out there as we get on into the overnight hours, uh, Sunday evening into the overnight hours on Sunday. So that's what we're looking at there, folks. Looking at the tropical activity, again, taking a look at the National Hurricane Center and showing you what they've got. Nothing in the Atlantic, okay? So not much going on there. Eastern Pacific, so again, we have tossed the GFS for now. Eastern Pacific, we've been watching Alvin. It will dissipate over the next couple of days as it gets on in toward the Baja of California here. And another area of disturbed weather could develop another named tropical storm as we go on out over the next couple of days. Looking at the satellite image today, so this is kind of cool. You can see this big area of low pressure up here in the northeast. There it is right there. See it? Big comma head around that frontal zone off into the Atlantic, and it's snagged up here along the Gulf Coast. So we're seeing some activity out here in the Gulf. If you're trying to do any fishing off the Gulf or out in the Atlantic, you know, you might you might see a little bit of in the way of unsettled weather there, but big clouds kind of coming in behind. That's kind of a cool picture. Really mostly sunny out in the west, except for the Pacific Northwest and really the desert southwest out here. But mostly it's a nice day today. Looking at the radar image, there's your radar Plenty of rain up here from Philadelphia on up into Syracuse, eastern New York State, into Burlington, Vermont, Bangor, and uh, Augusta, all the way up into Fort Kent and Caribou up here. You're seeing some rain this morning. If you're driving around up there, be careful. Take it slow. Look at the radar. We put that into motion, and everything's kind of moving off. You can see kind of how it spins around this low pressure. That's kind of neat. A little deformed band there. Rain over South Florida, or mid, mid Florida rather, thunderstorms showing up down here, and then a little bit of shower activity work in the Pacific Northwest. And here in South Dakota, with that wave coming down, dropping out of the plains, seeing some rain there as well. So we go through the, cup, uh, the next day or so up in the Northeast. This is where the big rain and unsettled weather is going to be. Over the course of the afternoon, that system will move on off to the north, get into Canada, dry us out as we get into the day tomorrow morning. It's still raining in Maine, but over the afternoon hours, that'll calm down a little bit, leaving a little backside shower activity in New York State. Not looking at a complete uh, you know, flooding event or anything like that, nothing to worry about there, but a couple of inches of rain, not out of the question, you know, from lower New York, lower Eastern New York, all the way up into Northern Maine, could see an inch or two of rain there. So just take it easy. If you cross a, you know, if you're going to go across a uh, flooded roadway, don't do it. Turn around, don't drown. You know the saying, you know how it goes. So that's what's going on there. We already looked at the surface map and just take, checking out the alert map here couple of things to pay attention to. Heat advisories all the way up to the Canadian border with big heat and the San Joaquin Valley and the desert, uh, the Mojave Desert, Death Valley could see temperatures in the hundreds in all of those areas, plus uh, maybe even getting to 115 in Death Valley, but 80s and 90s making it up out to the Canadian border. So drink plenty of fluids, take breaks if you're outside, it's going to be hot. And then in the Midwest, look at this, Midwest, Northern Great Lakes, we've got wildfires in Canada, smoke's blowing out of the north like this, and it's bad air quality so you can really see uh, some you know if you're sensitive to the you know to air quality and, and and pollutants in the air and things like that you need to stay indoors up here because it's not a good situation plenty of smoke and uh, you probably see that as you walk around in the air and smell it too so just be be careful up there in those areas Temperatures of the next couple of days, warm in the desert southwest, 80s and 90s all the way up to the Canadian border with the exception of the Rockies. In the northeast, it's going to be cool, 50s and 60s up here in the northeast, transitioning to 70s and then 80s as we get on down into the southeast. It's going to be a nice day for the most part uh, in the southeast and and western portions of this area. It's going to be feel spectacular outside, actually. And as we go on into Sunday, much the same scenario. Trough working into the west will cool it down out there, 60s and 70s. Again, 50s and 60s. So quite cool up here in the northeast with cloud cover hanging around under that low pressure system. But as we get on into the south toward the Great Lakes and upper southeast, it's going to be very, very nice, drying out a bit. Cold front kind of moves through, reinforcing shot of cooler air, at least for a time. Big warmth in the plains down into Florida, 80s, 90s, all in those areas there. So that's your temperature outlook. As we go on in and take a look here at the longer range pattern, we've got a couple of things to show you here. So we're going to back this on up uh, into, we get to Monday, um, Monday morning. So what we're seeing here is a couple of branches of the jet stream. The northern branch, trough, ridge, trough. Under ridges, it's warmer. Under troughs, it's cooler and unsettled. Branch, the southern branch of the jet stream kind of going along like that. So as we go on out in time through the week, 
Watch how this shakes out. Trough comes into the West Coast. Ridge goes up out east. Going to be warmer out into the east, eastern part of the country. Subtropical jet maybe send a couple of areas of disturbed weather in through Texas uh, into the desert southwest. We get on out into Wednesday. Then we see that trough sort of broaden out. Look at this. So it starts to broaden out through the country. When troughs broaden out as we get on into the next weekend, this is the European Ensemble, by the way. When you start to see these broad troughs like this, it means that there's not going to be a lot of widespread active weather, and it means generally normal temperatures may be cooler than normal depending on how deep the trough is, but uh, that's what we're looking at, folks, as we get on in toward next weekend, taking a look at the temperature anomaly. So this shows you where it's below normal, so we can see it's already starting out the work week below normal in the east, much below in the northeast, much above in the plains, and then as we get on out into Monday and Tuesday, influence that trough out west, cools things down, ridge slides east, so we start to warm up the Great Lakes. And we get into Tuesday, we're seeing that cooler anomaly pinch toward the east. Farther and farther we get on out into Wednesday, we're going to see much warmer midweek along the northeast, particularly in east, you know, eastern section of the country in general. Big cool anomalies as we get to Thursday and to Friday out here in the west and central plains. And again, over time as we get toward the weekend, that all kind of washes out a bit, but we start to see average to maybe slightly below average for the bulk of the nation's midsection into the east. And so that's how we'll see it play out. The GFS is a little bit at odds with this, but I tend to lean toward the European ensembles in a, a lot of these cases because the GFS kind of gets out to lunch a little bit. So, But uh, in any event, we should see a slowdown in the weather pattern once we get to toward late week in terms of weather, big active weather. Well, that's the show for today, folks. Hope it was informative for you. Hope you have a nice end of May and a wonderful weekend. And I'll keep you updated on that solar activity that's happening. And we'll see what happens uh, as we get uh, in the next couple of days with auroras. But that's it, folks. Have a blessed weekend and we'll talk to you soon.